Space Jam 2 has so much going on in certain scenes that it's hard to keep track of everything. With enough IPs to make Ready Player One and Wrecked Ralph sweat, let's take a look at some of the moments you may have missed or didn't know the significance of during LeBron's first foray into the cyberverse. So watch out for spoilers on this basketball movie set in a Warner Bros exec's fever dream. Since this is a kids movie after all, they have to appeal to the youth and the best way to do that is of course through memes. Since this one has been floating around for a bit, I thought we should get this one out of the way first. In case you missed it, yes, this movie does have a reference to the Big Chungus meme in a similar way that the Sonic movie had the Sanic meme. So continue to look forward to these big summer blockbusters having outdated memes in them for the foreseeable future. To find this one, look during the scene when LeBron first gets to Toon World and meets Bugs Bunny. Bugs will transform into his more portly appearance when mocking Pistol Pete, excuse me, I meant to say Yosemite Sam. Very easy to get those two mixed up. But that actually isn't the only thing from the internet that this movie puts on display. During one of the more strange moments in this movie where LeBron James gets sucked into a server of Warner Bros intellectual properties to play a basketball game against an AI slash algorithm named Algae Rhythm is when Porky Pig is peer pressured into being in a one-sided rap battle. Now while that does sound like a premise that a legit algorithm wrote, it is a real thing that happens. But what made this scene at least a little worth it was the reference to an iconic YouTube video where super hot wins a rap battle and one of his crew makes this funny face after his verse in space jam 2 after porky does his thing tweety does a similar gesture and it's even soft confirmed to be a direct reference as ernie johnson nba commentator extraordinaire says that he was spitting hot fire in a movie dominated by references to multi-million and even billion dollar franchises it was cool to see a nod to a much smaller but equally culturally significant moment Another meme-inspired moment from the basketball finale comes after LeBron realizes that the Toon's greatest strength comes from them being goofy. No, not that one, that's a different billion dollar brand. When the Toon Squad comes out for the second half, to show that he's fully embraced his Toony side, LeBron makes this face. Now aside from it just being a funny face to see, this is most likely a reference to LeBron's tendency to troll his teammates, namely Dwayne Wade, during his tenure on the Miami Heat during post-game interviews. With so much of the movie dedicated to LeBron's life, both the ups and downs, it's nice to see them reference a more mundane but still funny callback to his earlier playing days. It's just too bad that we didn't get to see serious LeBron take over, but maybe that might have been too scary of a face for the young kids to see. But they also put it in this, so who really knows what they were thinking. Although the movie seems to lose this point like the original did at times, this is a basketball movie, so let's look at a few of the NBA references that you may have missed. The first is that LeBron being Robin in the Metropolis scene isn't just played for laughs, it's actually a reference to how during his tenure with the Miami Heat, LeBron was criticized for being more of a second option on the team rather than the main dude, hence the whole Robin and Batman thing. And something that bridges the gap between basketball and memes even further comes when LeBron's Toon Squad takes the lead over Al G's Goon Squad. As everyone cheers on the Toon team, the other color commentator, Lil Rel, belts out the iconic Kevin Garnett yell that anything possible! And just like that KG moment, I'm sure that after this experience, LeBron will feel the same way too. I mean, how often does he beat a super team with a couple of misfits? Oh, yeah, that is right. Another NBA reference comes near the end of the movie where LeBron gets posterized by Don Cheadle in his CGI form. Right after he stops gloating to LeBron, he gloats some more at the camera using Vince Carter's signature It's Over gesture from his winning run in the 2000 dunk contest. LeBron got his revenge back when he posterizes Al G to secure the win though, so remember kids, never gloat unless you absolutely know you've won, otherwise you'll end up being turned into an actual floating poster or something like that. I might have missed the metaphor on that one there. One of the reimagined versions of the other five basketball stars in this movie is Kronos, modeled after Damian Lillard. His entire gimmick revolves around his Dame Time catchphrase, but they also managed to stick in a moment that basketball fans, particularly fans of the OKC Thunder, won't forget anytime soon. When Kronos first uses his powers to score, he walks past LeBron while waving and saying bye bye, which is a callback to when he sent the OKC Thunder home in the first round during the 2019 NBA Finals. But don't worry, OKC fans, there's always next year. Or the year after that. Or the year after that. 
here's a two for one for you. For the first three quarters of the game, Al G is on the sidelines coaching his digital demigods and in those three quarters, he's usually in his normal shiny suit. But there's two instances where he changes. The first is into a red sweater that's reminiscent of college basketball super coach Bobby Knight and the second comes when he gets even more grumpy that his team is losing where he turns into professional grump and semi-professional NFL coach Bill Belichick. But Bill would never cheat, right? That's not why he subbed in his literal time cheat code, right? Since the movie revolves around LeBron and his family, primarily his relationship to his son Dom, it makes sense that the movie would have some allusions to LeBron's real life family. Before the big game, you can see LeBron writing the names of his family members on the side of his shoes, which is something that he's done during real games multiple times. Now, if only the movie cared to get us invested in them as much as LeBron is. With any good sequel, there's always going to be a few nods to the OG, and this movie is no different. In fact, there's two separate instances where the original Toon Squad's jerseys can be seen. The first is pretty obvious when you watch the movie as the Toons wear them during their practice right before the game, but when LeBron talks to Bugs in the saloon, you can see a jersey on the dummy Bugs made up so he doesn't feel lonely since everyone left. The jerseys aren't the only callbacks to the OG Space Jam either. You can see the main villains of that movie in their pint-sized forms during the game cheering on the Goon Squad because they're obviously sore losers. I would say maybe they'll be a threat in the next one, but with them being reduced to just a quick cameo, I think it's safe to say they'll be watching from the stands instead of even being on the bench for the foreseeable future. With the main plot of the movie revolving around video games, you'd expect there to be a bunch of references, but so far I've only been able to find two. The first is by far the most obvious, with baby LeBron being gifted a Game Boy back in 1998 by his friend, before throwing it away to focus on his basketball career. The second gaming reference comes in the following scene that's set in the present day. Instead of Dom using another portable console like the Switch or even a PSP or Vita, he's using a Wii but with two E's instead of two I's. At first glance, it looks like a reference to the Nintendo Wii, although that console wasn't mainly portable and if this is supposed to be current day, wouldn't actually make sense. What's interesting is that the Wii is actually a gamepad to be used with a phone and since a lot of the tech behind Dom's game is found on his phone, it actually makes sense for this potentially copyright infringing product to have such prominent product placement. Another strange inclusion is the A113 that can be seen on Marvin the Martian spaceship as Bugs and LeBron fly around to pick up the rest of the Toon Squad. The reason that this is strange is because that A113 is usually reserved for Disney Pixar projects. It's not uncommon for other projects unrelated to Pixar to feature it, but with WB being such a fierce rival to Disney in both their comic book movies as well as their premium streaming services, it's interesting to see the nod. Here's some quick history to understand this easter egg a little better. A113 is the name of the graphic design classroom in California Institute of the Arts that many prominent filmmakers have gotten their start, with many of them founding and later joining Pixar. One quick blink and you'll miss it moment happens when Bugs gets LeBron to borrow Marvin the Martian spacecraft. When Marvin is cycling through his weapons alt fires, they all have different rays in their names, but the one that stands out the most is the Charles Ray, or if you flip it, Ray Charles, which if you didn't know is a reference to the late great soul musician. Maybe that alt fire makes the person a great musician, or just legally changes their name to Ray Charles. I guess we'll have to wait until Space Jam 3 to finally see it shown off. Another reference to a genius in their field is during the meeting between WB execs and LeBron where Sarah Silverman, who plays my wife in this scene, says that they might have a little Stevie Jobs in reference to Dom since he was talking about how he's been working on his own game. That is of course a reference to the late Steve Jobs. Who the hell is Steve Jobs? Well aside from being the co-founder of Apple and chairman of Pixar, callback, he was also a huge fan of Black Turtlenecks. But that's not his only reference either. When Al G is trying to get Dom to come to his side, he changes his wardrobe into Steve's usual keynote outfit while standing in what has to be a play on the Genius Bar found in Apple stores. Now for this next one, if you're anything like me, which is to say born since the internet has been a thing, you might have watched this scene and just written it off as just some old movie. I mean, 
it is, but Casablanca is widely regarded as a classic and it's a pretty good way to connect the character of Sam in that movie to Yosemite Sam. This one can be found during the getting the team together montage around 40 minutes into the movie. And just to cover all our bases, the other movies in this montage in order are Mad Max Fury Road, Austin Powers, The Spy Who Shed Me, Casablanca, and The Matrix. And although we don't get to see which world he was in, Gossamer definitely seems like a Kangaroo Jack or Happy Feet type of guy for some reason. One of the best uses of an easter egg IMO comes when Bugs is doing his Looney Tune thing and uses TNT to blow up a bridge to show LeBron and foreshadow the ending when he says, I may live in a hole in the ground, but we still get TNT as it's a double entendre joke because if you look at the bundle of bombs, the TNT logo is the same TNT logo as the TV station, although the colors are inverted. Good on them for avoiding any potential copyright issues. I mean, they already have Ernie Johnson in this, so it should have been fine, right? One moment that definitely went over the heads of most of the younger viewers comes during the Toon Squad's first team scrimmage near the end. After Granny dunks after doing an Evil Knievel style stunt, she walks off saying game blouses, which is a reference to a skit done on Chappelle's show where Dave Chappelle dressed as Prince beats Charlie Murphy's team in a pickup basketball game. Good to see that Granny is a fan of the classics. And speaking of the classics, let's talk about the Iron Giant. There's several references to him from LeBron wanting him on his super team to him being present during the final game. The interesting thing about this version of the Iron Giant though is that he's seemingly from Warner Brothers' last massive property crossover bonanza, Ready Player One. If you look at the left leg of this version of Iron Giant, you can see that it's not fully constructed in the same way that the one from Spielberg's Sword Art Online clone is. Now, in case you thought that this movie wouldn't have Michael Jordan in it as a callback to the first Space Jam, you would be wrong because he's definitely in the movie, just not how you might think. In the movie, Sylvester brings who he thinks is Michael Jordan, and it is, but it's Michael B. Jordan instead. Boo this man! But that's not the only Easter egg in this scene though. When MBJ gives his pep talk to the team, it's the same one as in Friday Night Lights, which is one of the shows Jordan was on before he became the star he is today. It's also worth mentioning that because it's Sylvester who brings him, it could be a reference to Jordan's character in Creed as his mentor in that is played by Sylvester Stallone. But that's just a theory. A f this next one actually took me a second watch through. Initially, I thought that the Animaniacs were only referenced like in the meeting that was mentioned earlier, but if you look during the game after the second half starts, you'll be able to see Yakko, Wacko, and Dot watching the game. You can find them straight on when Wile E. Coyote is using his Acme duplication machine and during a zoom out from the court as the tunes celebrate. What can I say? Anytime I get to see my favorite geography teacher, I'm a happy guy. While we're at the game, let's just run through a bunch of different characters that you can see. There's Space Ghost, these weird yellow beans, The Mask, The Penguin, twice, Mr. Freeze, my mom, trust me she's there, I promise, General Zod and his homies from Superman 1 and 2, and Captain, F I mean Blue Falcon. Just picture it like it's a Where's Waldo picture, but instead it's a movie with like 42,000 people in it jumping around. So let's just say, if you want to see someone or you thought you saw someone in the movie, they're there. Amogus. Now don't worry, I didn't forget to talk about them, but since they were pretty prominent in the movie, I wanted to save it until near the end. Your favorite doctor and sidekick are referenced in this movie. When Kronos finishes his chaos control time stop, the scoreboard flashes with Back to the Bucket, which is of course a reference to Back to the Future. Oh, that's not the one you thought I was gonna mention. Oh, that's right, Rick and Morty are in this too. What is interesting about their inclusion though is that there aren't any other Cartoon Network or Adult Swim properties that are given the same love. Not even Teen Titans Go, which LeBron even starred in. Although the Porky Pig rap battle is reminiscent of a sketch in the Adult Swim show, Robot Chicken, so maybe there's that. Also, boom, two bonus things. For the final point on this list, why not end with the credits? I know it's not a superhero movie, but if you stay and watch the credits, you'll see all the tunes playing different sports, and some of them are even references to canceled Space Jam spinoffs, like with Sylvester and Tweety skateboarding, which could be a reference to how there was meant to be a Tony Hawk version, Skate Jam. 
You can even see Bill Murray playing golf with Bugs, which could be both a reference to his character in the first Space Jam, as well as a reference to the 1980 movie about golf, Caddyshack. It could also point to other potential spin-offs like an MMA version with Ronda Rousey or a tennis version with Naomi Osaka. While at its core Space Jam A New Legacy is a basketball movie, its main draw is the multitudes of moving media that it references. This list, even with all the extras, don't worry, those were freebies, don't even come close to revealing every single easter egg. But this movie is nothing if not a movie that you can rewatch indefinitely and still be able to find something new.